crack the mysteries of the Earth. Discover the energy that drives a planet and builds mountains. Uncover buried treasure and see what makes mountains blow. Find out what shapes the top of the Earth and explore the secret world below with me, Nick, on the rocks. This main street of Zillow, Washington, probably known best for its agriculture. There's orchards and vineyards surrounding the town, but geologists know Zella because the little town sits directly on top of evidence from giant floods that happened 16,000 years ago. But instead of loud, angry, destructive flood water like at Dry Falls, the lake beds here at Zella were created when each fast-moving Missoula flood was stopped cold, temporarily, by Wallula Gap near the Tri-Cities. Why? The water couldn't all get through the gap at once, so there was a backup. When the Missoula floodwater finally drained to the Pacific, what was left? One Ice Age lake bed, a record of an Ice Age flood. But look, along the Yakima River at Zilla, there are over 30 lake beds stacked one on top of another. And here at Granger along the Yakima River. And here at White Bluffs along the Columbia River. Count up the lake beds and you count up the number of Missoula floods all the way from Montana. At Burlingame Canyon near Walla Walla, there are 40 beds. Amazing. When did this happen? We only have one date so far. And the date doesn't come directly from the lake beds. This is volcanic ash, white with a bunch of gray layers above and below. What's going on? Looks just like the ash of Mount St. Helens in 1980. It is Mount St. Helens. It's not 1980. This is much, much older. This has been dated at 16,300 years ago. That's the level of precision that we can get from this ash. And this ash is important to us because this is the only place we've got in the Lake Lewis Basin to know exactly where we are time-wise. And the sharp definition is important, telling us this was a momentary eruption of ash in a place where we did not have lake water, but we certainly had a lake before and after multiple times. Bruce Bjornstad, a geologist and author based in Tri-Cities, has devoted 40 years to studying the Ice Age floods in eastern Washington. In addition to the lake beds, he has worked with stranded boulders in the desert that snapped the details of Lake Lewis into sharp focus. The river behind me is at 300 feet elevation. The elevation of this erratic is about 1,000 feet. So if you do the math, that's 700 feet of water that once filled this valley, the Wulula Gap, by an Ice Age flood. It's angular, which is a sign that it was probably embedded in an iceberg. The ice melted away, leaving behind the erratic that we see today. Each Lake Lewis lasted only a few days. But still, that was enough time to create these fascinating lake beds, multiple Ice Age floods, a strong stamp of water out here in the deserts of Eastern Washington. 